reserve draft time. This is due to yesterday's uh, preemptive GG call coming out from Weha. Whether it be accidental or not, uh, the repercussions are they're going to have no reserve time. Ben, how much of a factor is that going to be in the draft, if any at all? I think because they've given a day to prepare for zero reserve time is, is much, much different. If you actually have zero at the start and you didn't know, you'd be so under so much more pressure. Is this just for one game? Just for, just one, for one game, game. not yeah. the series. Yeah. I think that you might actually random a hero if you, if you didn't have any time to prepare. But I mean, it's definitely a bad thing <laughs> if you don't have reserve time because especially I mentioned these two teams are teams that would adjust their drafts accordingly. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have reserve time, you <laughs> might not be able to do that. What kind of approach are we going to be seeing? Because both these teams, somewhat a similar play style. They both hold, you know, record-setting GPM as far as jungle farm, lane farm. Uh, I'm anticipating Tide and Nigma to probably be a first priority between these teams. Earth Do you think Spirit. one's going to go for it and then the other has a counter for it? And yeah, Syndrome, Earth Spirit, still out there and at the ready. Both teams play it very well. We'll see if Weha is going to be taking it to the mid lane or if EG are going to get it for fear. I would say Earth Spirit's better. I only have 15 seconds, though. <laughs> <sighs> so, Secret have played this both ways. Early on, at the start of the patch, when Earth Spirit first came into Captain's Mode, they had it with Pi for a bit, but Jeez. Weeha is notoriously known as their best, one of the best trying to actually make them run out of time. He picked those instantly. Yeah. Well, he was expecting that. So... I, I wonder mean, if he's gonna ban yeah. quickly too. It was a similar opening where they had the Dark Sea plus Bounty opening against Fnatic yesterday. And they had the Sven in the second phase. It's a combination that still has quite good synergy. The Iron Shell and the Sven, and you have to search. But curious to see overall how does the Dark Sea fare in the laning phase this early. And because the Enigma has been picked, does this mean that the Earth Spirit is gonna be mid? <laughs> I mean. Weha is their best Earth Spirit player, yes. and I would say by a fair margin compared to Pylai Dai. We know the work he can do, and I'm sure EG know the work he can do with it, so they have to kind of expect it. Same with expecting that Enigma is going to be grabbed. Secret are doing pretty damn swell with it. Four games this major, 4-0 with it. It's, it's interesting to see how in the first phase, because that's really what's been guiding a lot of this is what heroes do you want to give away they decided to only ban the chen of puppy but not the enigma which we've seen other teams banning both mm -hmm. and it's not like they couldn't have banned both they they willingly chose it over od knowing that earth spirit would probably get picked but since it's the same player on secret playing both of those heroes i don't actually know if they needed to ban the od in the first place because we have plays both of them i think exclusively for that team maybe pi plays earth spirit on rare occasions so perhaps that they're too scared of that duo of Earth plus OD doing too much. But you end up giving Secret, like you said, th this is their choice. They think the Enigma is easier for them to deal with than having to face Earth plus OD. Because they have to be expecting that was going to be the You outing. can't do really Earth and Enigma support duo. That, to me, doesn't seem to work too well together. But, I mean, EG have to know that this would have been the one-two punch from Secret given the the setup they had, so this has to be premeditated. I'm, I'm curious to see what they're going to be doing with it from here on out. I, it's, what they did against Fnatic was they picked Darkseer first phase as well, like Winter said, and then they were expecting that Fnatic wanted to go for the Chen, and for Secret, they're obviously expecting they go for the Enigma. So you get Darkseer a one on two lane matchup. That hero thrives so much more in one on twos than in one on threes. Uh, some off laners can still do a lot nowadays, but Darkseer's biggest weakness is if he just gets completely shut down in lane, but. Obviously, a lot of 1v2s are doable, and if they aren't, he can still retreat into the jungle, but he wants to keep the secondary support down there, if possible, so there's no combo for ES in mid. Vengeful Spirit was the third pick up there for EG. Obviously, a, a good quick counter for the Black Hole, BKB or not. We see the Draw Ranger ban as well. Even though they don't have a, a, a range mid, they still might run it, as we saw yesterday, and they like to run it in tandem with the Enigma before the spend comes online. I don't even think it's weird if they actually did a spirit mid, draw in just safe lane, and Enigma jungle. Wouldn't the whole draw feel weird to you? It depends on what they give Misery. But I don't think it's... I think it's okay for what EG has, because they tend to play a little mm -hmm. bit slower pace. You know, how different is this series compared to the last the last series? Like, Prophet, Prophet, Prophet. This series, like, okay, no one wants Prophet. Mm -hmm. 
even though we talk about how good Prophet is in the current meta. Yeah, I mean, for Secret, yesterday you look at your game, was, like, Prophet was not that important to their to their, to game their play player. style. Yeah. yeah, so if they want to pick it up, they can just pick it up for the Evil Genius is clearly not terribly concerned about it. I'm curious though what they're going to put in the mid lane if they know this Earth is going to be going in the mid lane. We've seen Weeha have to go against some of the toughest mid laners, including an OD at the time. And mm. even though obviously he would get shut down in the CS department, his priority was just getting the XP, getting the levels, and then taking that level 6 to a side lane and creating an, an advantage there. Yeah, I mean, Osprey is not really going to win your mid lane if you are sending him mid against anyone. Like, he's not that great, but overall the hero just needs the levels, like you mentioned, and he's going to be able to help his team. So, I think that because their mid is going to be Osprey, they're going to have two other cores that are going to take a lot of space, take a lot of farm. And especially with having the Enigma as well, the other heroes will take a lot of space, and Weeha is just going to be generally trying to set up ganks and make space for his team this game. This is the exact same draft that EG had last, uh, had yesterday against Fnatic, by the way. Not the same order, but these were the four heroes they had, and the last one they picked was Clix. Uh, they had Bounty instead of Bench, I think. Because they opened didn't their draft they... Darkseer plus Bounty on the, the first game. Yeah, but the second game, didn't they run, wasn't that the game where they ran Clix? No, that was when they had Faceless and Void and Clix Am I mixing together. two games? Yeah, I'm you're mixing two mixing, games yeah. together. The yeah, first right. game, yeah. they had, uh... This is the best of both games, actually, combined into one. <laughs> put it that way. But all these heroes were picked in the series, yes. Yes, of course. Right. Yes, correct. So e EG is going to look for Fierce Hero as their last pick. Um, Seeker is going to look for... Does does Envy play? Envy definitely does play Lone Druid, right? If they want to run him safely. Yes. But have they have they done it? Rarely, though. They typically like to pair, I think, with Spectre. Like Spectre uh, Lone Druid, Lone Druid, Spectre. And Ro Lone Druid gets the Radiance. Spectre yeah. goes for the Manta Diffuser build. Yep. I'm not sure this is the pick Secret really wanted, but they have to pick before they run out of time, so... <laughs> it's obviously really difficult when... when you're under this much pressure in the draft. As Ben said, going into the beginning of the draft, when you have a day to prepare, you know what you're gonna do, but... you can't map out an entire draft. You can map out the first phase... often, and then after that you need time to think, but... <laughs> not so much of that for Puffy in this game. Yep, he's just gonna remove like one of the most solid ones, the Jug against the Darkseer and a Healing Ward for the Lone Druid. And Secret, of course, going to be removing the Phoenix. Yep, against Typically the Lone Very good against Lone Druid. We haven't seen Fear played a lot, but I wouldn't put it past Fear to be able to he play can, it. He can definitely play anything. Play anything. Sure. Yeah. So what is left here for Fear to be able to pick up and make some use out of? I mean, there's still Tusk. Uh, that would actually do the same thing as the Earth Spirit, the Mirana, the, the Stalker. Witch Doctor, maybe? Seems, oh, uh, it's banned out. Mm, that'd be the most stable one for me. Do you think they'll try and match the Greed, though? Sanking, maybe? Sanking. I was thinking, too. I think Sanking's a really yep. good choice. It's still possible. Mm -hmm. But if they, if they expect the Spectre, I don't think Sanking's as good. Well, definitely something to abuse the Iron Shell would be nice for them. Oh, this is another way of doing it. Or, yeah, they go for the Doom. Uh. It's a lot of ways to deal with Enigma ulti, though. Swap, Batrider, Doom, all doesn't really matter if he gets BKB or not. Yeah, Doom's but also uh, very good against a, a core high priority Earth yeah, Spirit. Puppy as doesn't to really one. like. He yeah, doesn't rely on. Uh, doesn't rely on the black hole that much. It's yep. more of like getting the mech. You know, if he needs to get the pipe or he needs to get a crimson for his team, he's always the guy that gets all those items. Like it's not so important that he doesn't get his black hole off. Uh, mm -hmm. So Seeker definitely gonna look to get. And it will yep. be the, the Spectre here. It's an Envy Classic. It's going to be very hard, though, in it for his laning phase because, like we mentioned, a Doom might be able to harass him a lot with the Darks here. All right, looks like we're going to be hopping right into game number one, our second series here for the Shanghai Major at day number three of the main stage event, Secret versus EG. We send it over to our casters now at the main stage. It's OD and Draskal. Thank you very much, Dakota. And indeed, Secret versus EG is one of the matchups that the viewers at home, they absolutely love to see this. And of course, they are still in the upper bracket. This is going to be no exception. And, and well, the draft, and I'm looking at it, I'm seeing some great stuff. We're going to be seeing Puppy Enigma, something that uh, so far this tournament has never failed to amuse us. 
and uh, EG bringing out the Doom this time. Yeah, I really like the Doom pick because it's a way to answer the greed. Like the panel was talking about potentially picking up something like a Sand King, but having the Doom means that you don't put as much pressure on yourself to land like that big epicenter or farm your Blink Dagger at a decent timing. It's more just Doom a target. Your job is more or less done. The hero farms phenomenally well, but maybe not as fast as an Enigma in terms of how you clear the jungle, but I think the late game transition for the Doom is a little bit easier because you're not really relying on the Black Hole so much. And like we said, we're not worrying about epicenter either since we don't have to position ourselves that well we can just kind of frontline for our team so I'm feeling EG with the Darkseer with the Doom they have ways of pressuring secret not just in the laning phase but also for them to take objectives we'll see if anything kicks up around the bounty rings looks like EG will be able to spin themselves the bottom top lane there's a stun on to two from RTZ they'll look for the bounty rune and well it's going to be Samal grabbing one misery grabbing the other but misery is he getting himself out of this one here? Artiz, he's got a mango, he's going to chomp on it, and has he got the range? Yes, he has. They'll walk in. Oh, PPD! Peter! Why do you take first blood? But hey, they get it anyway. EG there with a kill on the board. I think Winner would have <laughs> reported PPD right there. I think that's that a kill. report. Yeah, that's definitely. But still, first blood going the way of EG. It doesn't really set Misery back a ton because he's going to have his bear up in about one second, so he'll be able to run back. The only problem is he's not going to be able to creep pull. That's the biggest issue is a lot of the times when you're playing Lone Druid, you see people in this uh, tournament so far hiding their bear in the trees near the tier one and the safe lane, and you want to try to pull it down so you can at least secure yourself level two or maybe even level three, depending on if you get the bounty. That's the biggest problem with dying. As the fact that he has another bear, he'll be okay, and the link control right now from EG isn't phenomenal, so he might still get some decent EXP here. Okay, I mean, in terms of, of the length, the fact that we're seeing wheat on this Earth Spirit mid, which uh, I think this is pretty much right. I think it was around MDI started to really bring it in and, and play it at this top high level. I mean, up against the Samael's bat, this could not be an easy lane for the Earth Spirit. Yeah, it's not the best lane, but at the same time, I don't really expect Wee to be dying or anything. It's just going to be more or less both heroes kind of just doing their best to try to farm. And the other thing about Earth Spirit is he can rotate around once he starts to get levels. I don't think he's necessarily item dependent as much as he is just getting the experience as we're going to see Wee go for an aggressive roll here. He picks back into the tower as well, but not going to see much from it. It's just a... It's one of those matchups where you don't care about the gold. You just want to hit six. And Envy, in terms of the CS, he's, he's doing fine. Eight for one. The uh, Dark Seer Doom Lane, not doing too much to slow him down. He's still on par with RTZ Sven. The Pilot die, as we can see with the positioning, he keeps wrapping around just as if he can catch out either Universal Fear. It's not going to be the case, playing very safely at this moment. And, uh, of course, Puffy. He's going to have that standard good old time in the jungle. And the question is, when do you think we'll see EG try and do something about the Enigma? Well, I don't really think they care about pressuring him directly. It's more about just trying to pressure the safe lane. Because if Fear is able to secure every single bottom rune, because Wii doesn't want to rotate, knowing that EG have two heroes down here, and you can see Pi could be in trouble. Oh, indeed, here with the troll trap, and Fear being surged up. They're going to look to chase in. He's burning down. Can he get the final touch in? Oh, this looks like he can't. Twilight Dice going to be able to get himself back into the sidelines here. And EG can't quite find that final touch. I wonder if that would have been a kill if he had Scorched Earth instead of Infernal Blade. Because he's only level 2, right? Like, he just hit 3 after the gank was over, so I wonder if he just had the extra movement speed and the Ion Shell damage from Scorched Earth, because that's 14% movement speed that he just doesn't have with an Ion Shell on him. I think that that could be a little bit of a miskill there from Fear. Indeed, it's still just 1-0 at this point. RTZ still having a fine old time. We've seen, obviously, uh, the Lone Druid had to back up to that camp. And this is going to give a lot of space here for the Sven. And it's going to be mid between, of course, though, that Misery is in a safer position. And still, this mid lane matchup. We are 7 for 3 up against the males, 14 for 4. The Bat Rider certainly winning this lane. Uh, again, it's not really much of a surprise. The fact that Weeha only has 7 CS, this might be one of the harder lanes that he's had matchup wise in a very long time. But he's got his Enigma free farming the jungle. His safe lane is being pressured a bit. I think a lot of this game is going to boil down to the fact that, like, Universe and Fear are going to be able to get so much out of this off lane, and they're going to rely heavily on Wee to have big impact in this game. Envy, has got to be careful here, taking a lot of damage from Universe as uh, Iron Shells, and uh, he's actually down to his last Tango here, Envy. So he's going to be in a bit of a trickier position, and, and because of the way the lanes are going, that is going to mean RTZ will be the, the top TS by a little bit. 28 compared to Envy's 18 now, as Universe is becoming more and more of an issue. We are. Being blocked up here by PPD, they're trying to get some mail in for this one. Pilot Dyer is there on the high ground. 
As I stand waiting, just in case EG were going to pursue, it's not going to be the case. Yeah. And Secret will be fine. I think at this point, EG are, are pretty content with the way the game is going. Like, Universe is not really feeling any pressure uh, in his off lane. He's just been able to get a decent amount of farm, like, almost matching Envy's farm at this point, and to be expected, because when you pick Lion and Spectre into a Darkseer, you don't really expect to be able to zone him. But EG still wanting to pressure the safe lane. They're smoked up. Let's see what Fear and PPD can do with this one. They've got eyes on Envy, and Envy's still hanging around. He's incredibly low. He doesn't have any regen. He's only got the stick charges to rely on him. Straight in, here we go. He's all alone. Fear and PPD closing in. They'll catch him out, and they'll bring him down at the same time. Mid lane, Samel dies. Get the kill. Poppy is there for the return one. But that's two big kills there for, for EG, and they do lose the bat for it, but still a trade that the die's going to be happy with. I think that this, this Darkseer opening is so strong against what Secret would like to do because they've been one of the teams, obviously aside from EG themselves, who've loved the Enigma and loved running heroes like Tidehunter. The biggest issue that those heroes have is if you just have better lanes, then it's really hard to go for the 5 versus 5 team fight. And I think this is kind of what EG are going for here, knowing that Secret have Black Hole, they have Spectre Haunt, obviously the Magnetize as well. You can see potentially uh, more aggression here on this bottom lane soon. They're just dropping wards behind the tower. Looks like Pilot is going to scout him out, but they just don't want Envy farming at all. He's got four down it. Here's the bat surge of Samael trying to get range here for the last only will. He brings back Envy. The rest of EG's there to close in on him. Envy still fairly tanky with a point of dispersion, but it's not going to be enough. Another kill onto the Spectre. EG making things happen here on the bottom lane, and, and Envy's game starting to get harder and harder. And just look at the difference in farm now. This Spectre compared to Arteezy's Sven, and as you said, a lot of it down to the fact that they did have that Dark Searing lane here, EG. It's just doing an insane amount of work. Just the pressure of having a Doom with an Ion Shell, a Scorched Earth, and he also has Purge. So he ate that uh, small Seder, which gives you the ability to just chase anyone forever. Like, what's a Lion meant to do in this position? He doesn't have anyone to rotate for him except for the mid. So at this point, with Magnetize available, we, with that Teleport Scroll that he has in his stash, he needs to send it out. He needs to start doing something because you can't wait forever. Like, Misery is getting a decent amount of farm, actually more than his own safe laner at this point. But if EG continually apply this level of pressure, they're gonna co start to collapse and like lose their tier ones. I mean, one thing you gotta think about though is Secret, I'm sure, they must have anticipated the lanes weren't certainly gonna go too great because they do have an enigma. So there's gonna be that kind of weakness. So you'd imagine the Secret have some sort of a plan to come back from not an ideal laning stage. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Magnetize, Black Hole, Obviously, Lion is going to be good during the mid-game for control. They have ways of taking team fights, but the biggest concern that you have to have is how like the laning phase is kind of rolling out so far. And sure, Envy still has a decent amount of CS, but it's not necessarily about how much farm they have. It's how much EG are getting out of the laning phase. And Fear's been moving around quite a bit, but he still managed to get level 5. And he's still got his Iron Talon Tranquils up, and he's got a kill under his belt. So even though he's been more mobile than the Enigma, he's had more impact than the Enigma up until this point. Fear indeed just trying to find this, this level 6, so he can come online even more in these fights. Universe, finding a bit more farm there, and still ahead of Envy Spectre. Secret putting a bit of pressure onto the mid lane. They've got three heroes hanging around, but some males playing it safe. I'm pretty sure if that boulder smash hit, it was a kill. That's actually really unfortunate that we missed that because not only was Puppy there, but Pi Die was there too. And Pi of, of the support definitely needs the experience. Like he wants to get six as soon as humanly possible. Let's try to out of front. Envy has got horn, and he might need to use it to get out of it. He's not even gonna have the chance. Arteezy was there, straight in with the storm armor and the god strength and. This is the scary thing about having a Spectre up against a Sven that gets this far ahead of you. Suddenly, the Spectre just can't do anything in these engagements. I think the Spectre pick just ended up being too greedy of a choice. After seeing a Darkseer opening, we saw during the bans that they took out not only the Night Stalker, but the Bounty Hunter. I'm not sure if uh, Secret banned both of them, but they definitely banned at least one of them. And in that that scenario, they just don't want that partner hero with the Darkseer to pressure the safe lane as much as it was. But EG's answer to that, having already seen the Enigma, is just picking the Doom. Because it's almost an equally greedy hero, but easier to execute. And that's kind of been the theme for most of the teams that I think have stayed in the upper bracket. Just picking the lineup that is easier to run, has a stable laning phase, and a very simple win condition. So I really am I'm thinking that EG, very solid draft, very solid performance so far in the first 10 minutes. Smoke up here, but I believe we was clipped uh, by that Observer Ward. So, EG, unlikely to get caught out off the back of this one. Nine minutes in, 4.7k here on Arteezy. 
this is uh, it's certainly panning out to be quite a simple Sven game here for the boy. Yeah, well, the longer that they leave Misery alone, there is always an opportunity for him to come back into the game, get his radiance. Oh, that's a nice again. kick and stun onto Pitta, silent there as well, and here comes the hole from Envy. They'll focus onto Samel and they'll get themselves the bat. The power of the Spectres shine off that Envy getting himself involved in the action. Wings got to be a bit careful here, he's kind of left alone. He's still trying to fight with the Magnetize, ticking PBD down. Hobby's coming in as well, there is a black hole. He's not going to want to commit it at the moment, Universe able to get himself out of there but nonetheless this is exactly what secret have got to do they've got to use that horn every time it's up to find themselves those big kills it was really nice that they managed to get the bat but they should have also killed ppd that's the second boulder smash that we has missed this game that pretty much prevents a kill and when you're in a situation where your laning phase isn't going ideally you really need your impact player to make the plays for you and so far we he's made one successful rotation and ends up missing a secondary kill he's got to shape up a bit we earn now an MV on top of the phase, so he really is ready to jump in at, uh, at the moment's notice. And make now done on Puppy. It's the classic 10 minute here timing here for the map. We'll see what he's able to achieve with it. Two to five at this point. The secret, not in an ideal position, but as you said, they've certainly got the wombo combo to really swing these team fights back round. But there's EG, they're the ones looking for the fight at the moment. Smoke up through the jungle. Smell Universe and Mr. PPD. So they're not going to find anything. Secret just playing it safe for now. It's, it's definitely good for Secret to play passive at this point. Again, Misery is being left completely alone. Like, this is the guy that I would probably think about ganking at this point, seeing the Midas on the bear. You just don't want to give him a free lane. You know, just at least have somebody up here who's going to be trying to contest his farm, and it looks like uh, uh, is going to be that guy. And for the time being, it's just Secret trying to effectively farm the map. It's not that EG are getting ahead in terms of map efficiency, it's that they were just getting ahead in a static laning phase. So now that it's kind of broken down a bit, I think Secret, their map awareness and the way that they make moves and make space for uh, for Misery and Envy to farm is going to be key here. And why is on Arteezy? I mean, Arteezy this one, 11 minutes in with the Sanj and uh, and with the uh, Treads. He, he was doing pretty much 300 and... Uh, you know the number. He was doing a lot, a of, lot damage. of damage. We'll uh, 11 a minutes lot. in. Yep. It's that, that's the power of this fan that gets this kind of good start in the laning stage. And RTZ just, he wasn't contested at all. It sounds like a small thing, but the fact that you bring up the Sanj choice, a lot of the Sven so far here at the Shanghai Major have been opting for the Yasha, and I think Yasha is just the better farming item, right? So the fact that he picks up that item first, we also saw him rotate for at least two kills of the five that EG currently have. I think he just knows that he needs to be at team fights a little bit more than maybe some of the Svens we've been seeing so far, just because they need to continually apply that pressure so that Misery and Envy don't get farmed. <laughs> Secret at the moment, just trying to slow down the pace a bit, get a bit of space for their cores to continue to farm up. Envy trying his best to find the three areas around the map. It's, it's rather deep at the moment, it is being spotted out by this uh, CG ward. It's only RTZ around the corner. And Blink now done on some mail, so extra catch potential here for EG Drums as well on Fear. So they are very much ready to start to, to again look for the pickoffs and run straight at Secret. And uh, the mech was also done about a minute ago on Universe, so, so things are really coming online here for EG. The question is, does Secret have enough to, uh, to kind of compete in these fights when EG force them? It's a lot of it's on Wii. I mean, this is the hero that is going to have the most teamfight impact outside of landing a, an amazing black hole, you know? It's very rare that you see things like hitting a, a lion stun and like three plus heroes, but getting a three-man black hole is doable in a lot of situations. It's going to be tough, though, for Puppy. So with that being said, the pressure is on Wii. Can he land a good boulder smash? Can he get the magnetize off? And in that team fight, if they uh, if they can get a good engagement, get some good disables going, I can very easily see them winning it. Nice right, towards the top, and he's going to hide out in the tree and uh, get himself out of that. At the same time, the rest of Secret are actually going to wrap up to this top lane, so maybe a bit of a plan here to draw them up with Envy's presence. Now he's TP'd out, back to base. He's got the mana for the Horn and the Dagger, so he can come straight back in. They're eyeing up Arteez in Fear. Here we go with the Horn, setting up the vision. They'll look to go into Artor here with Envy. There's a finger to Fear, the Hex as well. Puppy trying to bring this one down, but Fear maybe a little bit too tanky for the score. It's up the same time on the left. Arteez getting low. He's going to go for the TP. Oh! Arteez TP's home. He gets himself out. Now EG just turning around. The Doom has dropped onto Puppy. They're going to lose high as well, and now Samael gets himself in, lasso onto Envy. We says, I'm out of here, son, and Envy.
He will be able to get himself out. He's, he's in the tree line. He's going to continue to run. PPD. Didn't quite have the mana anyway if he went the right direction. But there we're just seeing Secret struggling to fight into EG's power at this point. They just can't kill them in RTZ from a top notch TP. Yeah, that was very nicely played. Excellent swap coming in as well. The other thing too is. There's a lot of mechanical mistakes happening on Secret. I mean, a miss stun, missing a kill on Fear, he was very low health. I'm pretty sure it would have killed him if it ends up landing. So what, that's three mechanical mistakes that have basically cost guaranteed kills on the side of Secret so far. And all this stuff is going to add up over time. When you have a lineup that's very execution heavy, like your impact heroes or Earth Spirit, you need your Lion to land good stuns and such, you can't afford to be making these mistakes. Let's see if uh, each can run anything more here. Oh, TZ for the full on. S and Y, and this type is going to be the call off the back of this. TVD is there as well with the wave of terror. And Secret, really not in a good position to do anything about this. Yeah, I mean, just when you, not aware of it either. When you saw that black hole use top and it didn't result in anything big, EG also get two kills, don't really lose anything for it. That pretty much just says to Secret, we cannot contest Roshan anymore. Like our Spectre doesn't have the items, we also pop talk for that. So that that's pretty pretty free. EG aren't going to feel any pressure. The lanes on the side of Secret are pushed out a little bit, but they're not even going to be able to get a tower in reaction to this, and just EG pulling a little bit farther ahead. Oh, TZ clearing out a massive stack here in the Ancients as well. More gold here to the Sven. 9,000 net worth at this point, and oh, poor old Envy. Look at his position on the net worth board. It's He's not great. third from bottom on the Spectre. It has not been a great game, and I think it just goes back to the laning stage, as you said. Doom Darks here. Not the ideal lane to farm in for a Spectre. EG, they knew exactly how to deal with Envy's hero. It's really tough. And the other thing about it is when they picked up Lion, EG already knew that their Darks here pick was going to do a lot. And then when they saw Spectre, they're like, oh, we all of a sudden have the easiest off lane of our entire life, unless the Enigma comes down to gank. And even if he did come down, if Fear is in the area, you have to decide between which two heroes you want to go for. And in that time, you know, you could take too long, hesitate, one of them walks away, they both walk away, what have you. It's it's just a really rough start for Secret at this point, but it can still be turned around. That's the thing. The nature of their lineup, a good black hole, a nice Earth Spirit initiation with the Veil now completed up on Wii, the amount of damage that he's going to have with level 2 Magnetize is not to be underestimated. So again, it's just down to can Secret execute the team fight. EG grouping up on the top. They'll find themselves this tier 1 more than certainly. Secret aren't going to want to come into the neighborhood for this push. That's a blink on RTZ as well. So he's going to be ready for the openings. Ready to catch out some of the members of Secret. And um, bottom lane, some mail. We can get anything here. There'll be a horn and a finger onto PPD. They'll get themselves a kill. Envy kills a bit as well. They want to try and fight this one. The stun onto Puppy RTZ has been hexed up. Envy moving in onto Phil as well. And he's going to find himself another one. They'll lose Puppy, but two kills here for Secret. They may lose Envy as well. In fact, the cleave off the bear. Nearly killing Envy on the Spectre, but he will get out. We are as well to roll out of there. So Puppy for Fear and, of course, PPD. Pretty much the best trade we've seen Secret get this game. Yeah, that was definitely in their favor. Plus, they, they forced a fairly sizable reaction like the entirety of EG walking towards the bottom lane. That means that mid was being pushed out by Pali Dai. He's able to get a little bit of farm. He's about halfway to his Blink Dagger right now. But we can see that the EG with the Aegis up on Artur now having the Blink Dagger on top of that. They have the initiation potential now. They have an insane amount of damage. And this is very reminiscent of the game that we saw yesterday when it was uh, Newbie versus Fnatic and Mushi Sven was kind of getting out of control and he kind of single-handedly took over the game. I feel like Arteezy is kind of in the same position as Mushi was where he can just be that guy who just dominates and completely pushes it in EG's favor. Oh yeah, this rate, as you said, just a repeat of Miracle Sven, Mushi Sven yesterday where we can get to the point of the game where Arteezy just jumps in and two hits some of the heroes in secret. Absolutely, this is very scary ter territory. And not being able to team fight into EG right now unless you get a very favorable engagement. A lot of that's going to depend on vision too. One on lane, they've got the last up on some mail. They're looking for Ramby and straight in. And here we go, bringing him back. There will be a secret action from the side of Secret Puppy. He has got the black hole. Can he get himself in position? He's got to be a little careful. He's going to use it to control our core. Do they have the damage to bring him down? EG just watching for the turn. Oh, TZ still alive. He's just going to walk it off. He doesn't care that he's being black hole. He doesn't care that there's magnetized on an axe for the urn. He might sit down. RTZ getting low. Is he going to fall? No. He doesn't die. This is so painful for secret RTZ stays alive for it all they can't kill him and EG just forcing secret back up the lane the fact that the Sven didn't die there 
Oh, that, that's gonna hurt for secret. Oh dear. This is rough. This is very rough. That was a black hole and magnetize. And I'm pretty sure he also had Midnight Pulse down too. And he still couldn't kill the Sven one time. This is a really bad sign for Seeker right now. There's not really anything else besides getting like a Radiance or a Manta up on Envy that's going to give him a, a big damage increase. Because Alion already has his ultimate. He's going to be level 11 probably in the next like, I don't know, 5 to 10 minutes. He's still only level 8 at this point. And no one else really on the side of Secret gets any huge items outside of the Radiance that we just saw Misery pick up a little while ago. So they have kind of their, their core setup. I suppose you could say like BKB or Blink on Puppy would be nice, but there's actually a lot of things that go through BKB that stop Black Hole in this game. Yeah, it's not an easy game for the Enigma. Uh, mid lane, a lot of hate going on to the bear. Walking the bear, so now leeching him back. Now it's not going to be quite enough to kill Martini. He really wants to kill this. He's, he's playing with this one, they are torn. He's, he's okay, that's an Aegis. The bear taunt worked out. Misery, ah, oh, he does lose it. Samel, I'm going to have to jump it down and we'll see if they can catch anyone else out here. There'll be the recent one about the block, bring your puppy straight back into the middle of it all. They'll use the horn, they're trying to fight here, Secret. Oh, the back in Black Wall! They'll lose out TG though, Secret still living for this fight. It's going to be Envy this time to clean up. They found two kills here. Secret are doing it. Still up to Samel. They'll get themselves a double kill on the Air Spirit. Four heroes down on EG. And a huge horn. It was a universe. Bless him. It was a lovely vacuum into the wall but secret the bears radiance just melting through eg and envy just turning up at the right time and a huge fight and a huge golden xp swing there to secret and misery and we did so much work in that team fight the magnetize with the veil on top of the radiance burn and the bear getting that root onto universe as well just an insane amount of damage and eg picked a fight where they didn't have doom they didn't have lasso they didn't even have god strength oh my goodness team secret being battered about for the first 20 minutes but misery the timing on the radiance and as you said we are just coming in with the big plays when it was needed and certainly secret knocking on the racks of egs they'll find themselves the range racks now the players say fell back off the mail ah oh, he's looking for the bear in fact well fit jumping in with the doom monster we are teasy oh, oh. It's not quite enough though, they'll be fine apart from Wee. He's gonna drop RTZ, can he get himself more? Third forward, looking for Misery, one more slice will do it, and it does. Bring it down Lone Druid. Now RTZ, he's got his eyes on Envy. Can he get this one somehow coming in there? Just done the last one to hold Envy down. And suddenly, just like that, EG regained their control on the game. I think that's kind of how the pace of the game is going to be dictated. If EG have Doom up and they have Lasso, they're going to be going in every opportunity. But that one team fight where they were chasing down middle lane after RTZ lost the Aegis, that was probably the least favorable engagement that they could ever take in any situation. If you don't have the ability to pull somebody out of position and you can't Doom either we or put it on the Enigma, the team fight from Secret becomes much easier because then you don't have to worry about being out of the fight for, you know, 10 plus seconds if you get Doomed, if you're Puppy or if you're Wii in this game. I don't think that EG are going to be making another uh, another decision-making error like that in the near future. And the fact that Roshan, we're going to see how quickly it's going to be spawning here in just a minute or so, or closer to two minutes actually. Um, once that's up, all of EG's ultimates are on fairly low cooldowns. I'm pretty sure the longest one I have is Wall, and that's about 100 seconds. So when that's uh, or no, Doom's actually longer than than Wall. But in this game, it's it's going to be all about the cooldowns. And, uh, talking about the cooldown secret, they've got everything online in terms of ultimates. And Puppy did just pick up a smoke. Yep. So we'll see if they, if they do want to try and look for something in a bit. And in terms of the farm on Envy, the Spectre, as he's still just what he's looking for. He's not got, has he got the ultimate on? Uh, is on the courier? No, he's still uh, just an ultimate orb short there with the Manta stuff. The Manta is going to be really big. It's a huge damage increase for the hero. And if you do manage to isolate a target inside of a black hole, you pop Manta, you have your two images and you hitting him, the amount of damage that Desolate can do is insane. Even a tanky hero like Sven can drop to that. But they are four men. Eyes on Envy. <laughs> yeah, they really want this Spectre. Well, let's see if they're going to get it. He has got the TP. He has now. Yeah, he's out of there, I think. He's made this mistake before. He's not making it again. Yeah. Envy gets the TP and he's out. That was nice movement from Secret because in the meantime they get the offlane power, so forcing EG to waste the smoke. They also don't get the gank that they're looking for, and Secret are able to take something back. 
what's the I mean if you're secret do you do you need to be looking to, to try and find some more objectives and try and try and push high I mean you're looking at the spend in terms of it going on RTZ surely he's gonna be pretty happy with, with just playing the farm game at this point well, Sven is always going to be a terrifying hero if he gets like a vac stun into a couple of auto attacks. That can just destroy an entire team, right? But that's a, a perfect storm kind of scenario. It's always something that you need to keep in the back of your mind, but I think that Secret will feel relatively comfortable going into late game with, you know, a Spectre, a Lone Druid, the potential for a Black Hole. That is enough late game, I think, to where they're not going to feel a tremendous amount of pressure. Mid lane, Fear will drop the Doom here onto Envy. You've got RTZ moving in on the side. We'll see if he can get quite close enough. It looks like Envy a little bit too speedy. RTZ, uh, he's not going to commit for that one. Secret is there by the side of Envy. So that is the Doom down. And uh, Roche is uh, up very soon. Effect. Very, very soon. And with the Doom being expended there, I think they're starting to realize that we need to be near the Roche and pit just in case that is available. Pile I die also having that blink dagger now for the team fight. So right now there is vision around this pit for secret as well. They're gonna see pretty much everything that EJ are doing. As your manta ready on envy as well for the next fight. Uh, as you were talking about, they've certainly got the tools to, to fight against EJ around this position. It's gonna be all about which side is gonna be the first to try and commit for the rush. 1900 on Misery, looks like he is working towards that AC here for the team. And EG, coming down this bottom lane. Let's see, Let's see who's going to be the first team to jump. Oh, it's easy just front lining at the moment. Oh, got that vision thanks to that. Need that nice warding around the pit here, Secret. And here we go, Arteezy. He's moving across, seeing if you find anything. There's the horn coming out. That looks to focus down to male and to male. Holy way, yes, he's going to go down. We with the stun gets it. Arteezy from the BKB. Eyes off the puppy. Can they keep up with her? Oh, PPD as he swaps himself in. He wants to jump up. But puppy turns around with a mouth. PPD. He's going to go down. Now the stop the pull out there. Clipping onto Arteezy. Secret moving in. Don't get the screw. The ball to roll on to do in the mouth door. Fully loads to the back. The dice to the radius to the fail. He will go down. Beautiful ball. Secret turning it the hell up and they'll head into Roche and what a mess for EG. What an absolute mess. God, that was so nicely executed by Secret. But we go back to the vision, right? Like, look at the words that Secret had right now. They saw everything that was going to happen. Every single thing, every movement that EG made was spotted out. That was just perfect execution, knowing full well what EG were planning to do. And again, not having the Doom off cooldown, stuff like that can really lose your team fights. I mean, you were talking about we earlier, how he needed to really step up his play from the laning stage, and he has. He did it, yeah, every definitely. Team fight now, we are, I don't know what happened to him, but he's, he's tuned into the game, and he is in the zone. Those are what we like to call the game-winning team fights right there. The fight where you kill four heroes, you get Roshan, you know you have good late game. Secret have got to be feeling really good right now. Boy, in misery. How is that AC looking now after that fight? Just 1300 here. Uh, no, he's got a hyperstone, so yeah, he is very close now, misery. Yeah, he's got nearly enough for the plate now, now just a recipe away. We, as, as you said, just the warding, the fact that I'm really surprised. The, to initiate. Uh, the way that they took that engagement, like they knew they were going to be fighting over Roche, but they didn't take the time to D ward, and Peter had two sentries on him. Like he could have dropped a sentry on the hill near the ancients, which is a very, very common ward spot. And now with the gems, Sumail's going to D ward and be like, oh, okay, this is why the fight went so poorly for us, because they literally just saw what was going to happen. But if they had that gem prior to taking the engagement or just dropped a sentry on that cliff, I think it could have been a very different story there for EG. Very small differences that are separating these two teams right now. Uh, it certainly felt just the the kind of the misery lone druid and uh, the envy spectre it, it worked out in the sense that they had the spectre at eg they were worried about that and suddenly you know misery just climbs up through the game and he's top of the net worth misery just doing a lot of work this game we see eg smoked up thing they can find with that they wall they puppy. Swap. puppy coming up lane puppy oh oh bless him puppy no mercy here for the man they'll use the horn they'll try and fight back into it puppy will go down though they get the real onto the male and be in the midst of it all nice stuff but we are onto two and envy don't you chip away the gem's gonna be dropped some hits the deck now he's trying to come through he gets envy but envy's got the aegis universe be rooted up here they drop the wall in the middle of the fight now it's easy blinking forward looking for misery on the side envy's back 
Yeah, he's going to turn on to PPDs, looking for the weaker heroes, trying to bring down Peter. Oh, TZ stuns the bear, Mystery's going to go for the straight TP out. Is he going to get it there? Fear coming down with the blade. Now PPDs popping himself in. The stun from Pyro, that comes through. It's a three for two at this point. MB still in the fire. We are again with the stun. The bear, of course, TZ, oh, TZ. Oh, he gets weak, but he does end up going down at MB. He's the final one up here, looking for Fear. Pyro dies, still not quite close enough to help out. MB, he doesn't need any help. He's got himself. Who needs friends? Envy just does it on his own. My He's got this, God. this Spectre. Envy just, bam. We saw at the start of the game, he was third lowest on the net worth. 29 minutes in his third highest. And it's the power of the Spectre, Andy, and Envy utilizing it to perfection. Even having to force a buyback out of PPD just to defend the melee racks, that was like a double or a triple creep wave that was pushing down middle lane. They couldn't even afford to have that hit the racks. I don't I don't know, man. Like The way that each year taking team fights, that's another engagement where I don't know if they thought that they would win the fight because they saw Puppy first and just imagine that the Aegis wouldn't matter that much, but the way that they, they take the fight, I think they would have won if the Spectre didn't have two lives, but unfortunately that's not the case, and I think the Envy might have even had buyback at that point. Or no, he didn't, because he just bought the Fusel. So yeah, again, the Roshan fight coming back to fight EG, and it's just not... It's not one of those games where you can look at it and just say that clearly one team played better. It's just very small decisions that are dictating the pace of this. Absolutely. And the question is, is the pace getting a little bit too much for EG? We're seeing pretty much two big fights back to back, but Secret Erping the ones to come out on top of. Early game, laning stage, EG, they were all over it, but now Secret getting themselves back into the element. It was 17 to 14 in, 30 minutes into this game one of this best of three series and secret with the edge nearly reaching to about an 8,000 gold lead but uh, this is definitely something that's not impossible for EG to swing back round we know that these guys they're smart with their pickoffs they can certainly find something in Arteezy continuing to build up he's got the crit of course and 1400 gold nearly on top of that as well he's also going to be having to fight into the AC now picked up by Misery we should also talk about the fact that Pylai Dai pretty much made I don't know, 2,500 or so net worth through the last engagement because he was one of the two heroes on Secret who lived through the fight. And his ravages. Uh, Dude, he, every time. There was a three-man boulder smash to start the fight. Then yeah. we like reinitiates as well. Gets another nice stun onto Artur to win the team fight for Secret. And there were, I think, two two-man stuns at least coming out from Pylai dying to that engagement. But both teams are playing very well. This is definitely one of the closer games that we've seen so far. Uh, this is uh, certainly mapping out to be, you know, as you said, one of the most intense games here at the tournament so far. BKB, I believe, is now done on, uh, on, yep, it's finished, of course, on Puppy, ready for the next fight. As we talked about already, there are ways for uh, EG to count at about all for it. But uh, if there's anyone that's going to be able to play around, that is going to be Puppy. He's going to be very, very smart about when he decides to commit the ultimate. But at the same time, EG, they're going to do their best to outplay him. And the rest is secret. Envy now, 2k gold on top of the Mantis Diffusal. Um, I guess we've already got a Radiance in, in the game. Uh, what do you kind of build into now if you're the Spectre? Do you look towards the Heart, the Butterfly, uh, anything else that's on Envy's mind? I think that Heart is always a good option on Spectre, just because the effective HP and the way that this version works makes you just really annoying to deal with in the fight. And just between the Manta Diffusal, you already saw how much damage he can do. Yeah. So if he wants to go back and get something to tank himself up a little bit, I really think that Butterfly is a nice choice, because the, the Sven, he's building into crit, which means that he won't have MKB, and having the Radiance burn miss chance plus the Butterfly means that unless you're being cleaved down, if he's just trying to man fight the Spectre, that evasion can actually win you the man fight against the hero like Sven in the, in the ultra late game. So it's one thing to think about, but I think that the choices for him are pretty wide open. You can see Secret. And to get some of the vision up here in EG's jungle and see if they're able to lead into anything from this position. EG at the moment, all five of them around the mid lane. He's got an arcane rune as well, ready for the next fight. Could be a good time to try and go. All the ultimates online, but that is the case for both sides here. It's all got a little bit tense now. We're going to see Fear complete Mischievous Guard here on Doom. I'm actually a little bit surprised that he didn't opt the, the route of Blink Dagger on the Doom in this game. Like, given his position, he's getting a little bit of farm priority, but most of the income that he's making has pretty much been through Devour. If he had Blink Sheevas right now, 
I think that team fights for Secret would be so hard. Like, what if he blinked Doom's puppy? Even if he dies at that point, the rest of his team's gonna be able to follow him up. Maybe he gets def defensively swapped out by PPD or something. And they could take the team fight knowing that Black Hole's just not gonna be a factor. Or you could do the same thing to Wii. I, I think it's a lot down to he wanted to go Vlad's drums because his team was pressuring early, and they thought that they might have the potential to five man and just take map control away from Secret. And for a while, it was looking that way. And then we had that disastrous fight that was around Roshan, and all of a sudden Secret just had all the map control back in like one really big engagement. So the build itself, I understand the purpose of it, but given the, the current state of EG's team, they need another way of being able to jump on Puppy. They can't always rely on having vision. Well, bottom lane, Secret are there, and Samael is going to be the one to come through with the fast line pad. They click straight onto Samael with the finger. LMP coming in with a horn. That's going to be your battle rider down. Puppy has been doomed up here on the back lines. We, oh, he goes on straight to the middle of it all. Packing himself flying through from PPD. We, I think he's going to be left behind here. The rest of Secret says we're out of this one. Samael will hold down the other oh place. Now it's easy. Coming in with the crits. That was a 1500 damage crit. And they will find that trade there, but that was a buyback from Samael for that one. So a bit of a costly uh, expenditure there for EG. Uh, for sure. And the other thing too is he, I think they were expecting bigger pressure coming in from Secret, so he feels forced to buy back because if he doesn't, and a lone druid has this level of farm, they're going to be pushing high ground for sure. So no matter what, I think he would be forced in that position to buy out. Normally it seems weird because Roshan's not alive, but just respecting the amount of team fight presence that Secret have at this point, and also their ability to push. I mean, this one as well, you talked about how Pilar died off the back of these fights, huh? The man is rich! Is I mean, he's got a lot of money in the bank. He's only died once. Can we just talk uh, about that for a second? He's not He's not living up to his name, really, this game. He's, he's, he's no longer die, 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 die. He's, he's ascended. He is not indeed. 218 here on the Lion. And, uh, oh, what's he sending the car? Is he, what did he pick up? Anything major? Uh, it's just going to be some more wards here at the moment. Still holding on to the gold. Uh, but, I mean, sure, do you think he's just going to think about the acronyms this game? Uh, they've got a black hole to set it up. And, uh, of course, they have got the Veil online as well. It would be pretty fun. But I think something like a Lincoln's or a Lotus Orb might be more okay. appropriate given the, given the game. Like, Lincoln's is nice for being able to put it on Puppy if you have this level of farm. And that also means that Puppy can go for, you know, like, even an Aghanims, for example, on Enigma. He can go for, like, a Force Staff or, you know, a book. There's a, there's a lot of choices that he can make. When you have a, a support that's this rich, Glimmer is also a choice that you can do because you, you know you got the gem away from EG during the last engagement pop, so Glimmer is also a great option. And of course, Envy, 5.5k on him. Uh, what's the plan here for the man? He's sending it out to the secret shop. I think Butterfly is really uh, good or hard. He's going for the Scotty. He's just picked oh, up the overpass. Oh, he's okay. Uh, I get it really nice against the spam. Once the BKB waves off each one. Yeah, for sure. Well, Scotty, it, it, it doesn't really matter, BKB or not, so. No, it's, it's true. So. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, against Doom as well. I guess j against these melee heroes, they're going to be looking to run around, get the hit soon. Yeah, pretty much. It's... As Spectre, I seriously doubt he's going to be getting doomed unless, for whatever reason, he's by himself. Which is a, a possibility, but it's also very hard to catch him because he's been very, very vigilant about not putting himself in too dangerous a situation because he realizes, again, that their late game is, is very good. And as long as he doesn't get isolated and killed in a bad time, like, oh. Secret are just pressuring nonstop. Oh, it's easy. He's on his own a little bit here. And they, oh, oh, the roof! They jump straight in! Highlight die, fingering the hell out of the man! He's going to have to buy back here. Yo. Oh, oh, are they easy. gonna give it away? He's gonna need to do something. They'll pop the fortification. And okay, they're not gonna commit. They're just gonna, yeah, just trying to hold on to the defense without having to use uh, RTZ buyback. Uh, EG knew that Roshan wasn't up. That's why he didn't buy back. They have a wolf in the pit. Do you if think that uh, Roshan is about to spawn? Will they buy back on him when they see it and look to contest it? If the wolf dies, they won't know. But yeah. they will see the rest of. Oh, uh, can they kill the wolf in, in time? Yep. They okay, can. they don't. They're not gonna know that it's up then. Oh my God! And he's yep. got a DD and it spawns in their face. <laughs> that is so bad. All right. Looks like Icebox the secret fan. Because that, like in this situation, he doesn't want to buy back because he wants buyback for a bigger fight. Like losing the racks potentially is not as scary as the idea of losing Roshan and then, you know, secret all of a sudden have the potential to just straight up end the game. But because the wolf died and like literally two seconds later it spawns, all of a sudden EG feel maybe not in the most comfortable of spots. So it's been a while since uh, we've seen Puppy able to use a black hole, and he hasn't needed to. So he has still got it available. That's one of the scary things for EG as well. Oh, they got pipe finished on Universe. This is actually really nice. This is great defense item for high ground. 
Looks like they're going to let these racks fall. Yeah, they, they have to wait for Arteza to respawn. The single set of racks, when you have like this level of wave clear with the Dark Seer and the Sven, it's it's not like a huge thing. It's an, a nuisance, but you can manage it. It's more terrifying to think about having to buy back and potentially dying once and then the game just ending, right? Because that's kind of the stage where we're reaching right now. It's getting to the 40 minute mark where every buyback matters, I would say, more than a single set of racks, unless you're already down one, in which case you might want to start contesting the second. EG boldly coming out of the base here. They're Looking trying to take it by surprise. They are going to be fighting, of course, into this Aegis. Let's see what they can do with it. RTZ jumps in on to MV, gets the stun off, and here we go. The same time, oh, the control of RTZ gets bursted down. Then he's got big getting rooted up. The wall getting dropped, but it doesn't matter. MV's just cleaning them up. There's a buyback from RTZ. He needs to get back in it, but the rest of his team just dying slowly to the magnetize. The burn as well. Some out the fall. We get himself a double kill as the magnetize ends up finishing BPD off. And RTZ, the lone man there, left to defend the base after his buyback. And GG. GG is called Secret. 24 to 15 after what was not the best of starts. EG with the Doom Darks here caused you a lot of issues for MV, but MV, he proved that it didn't matter. Turns it around and Secret. Game one victory for the man. I would be curious to hear what the panel has to say about this because, in my opinion, this game was won almost entirely.